Hey everyone, a uh, quick morning video. I'm trying not to make this too long again. I get on the road up to the island. Um, here's the rates situation in a nutshell, and I'll start with a very big picture of uh, all boats with our lead, lead, lead boat, Infinite Diversion, up here entering Gray's Reef going 5.4 knots. So a little slower than we've seen them, but still moving quite nicely with about 25 miles to the finish. Um, depending on weather in the straits, and we'll talk about that in a minute, <clears throat> we could see them finish quite early today. Um, and much sooner than really any of the forecast anticipated. Um, let me just take a look. Let's go next to our big boats here. So this is the the big guys. Out in front of the big guys, right on top of each other, are Il Mastro and um, Windquest. They're doing around 11, 12 knots right now, which is pretty good boat speed. <laughs> and they're going to be um, um, headed outside of the Manitous. Let me just see if I can zoom to that real quick for you guys here. Let's take a look. Watch this. Yeah, so here's the Manitou Islands right here, these two islands, and this is uh, Windquest and El Mastro going around the outside of them, which is a longer route. <clears throat> Last year, they both went inside of it, and they sort of stopped um, for the day on um, on Sunday. So uh, I, I, the conditions are a little bit different this year, but uh, it's extra distance, but the, they believe that they're going to be able to stay in more breeze going this way, and so they are um, they're going that way. Uh, if we look at the cup... The cup boats are a little bit farther back, uh, largely here between Sheboygan and between Little Sable and Big Sable Point. And um, wind speeds, uh, excuse me, boat speeds are fantastic. You know, Ferris 36 going 6.5 knots. Uh, a rocking horse here, which is a J105 going um, at 7.8 knots. Everybody is west of the rum line, which you would not see in a normal race. You'd see everyone sort of grouped around the rum line if they could do it. Um, now, the you know, they're probably... Uh, uh, got great wind out of the southeast right now. They probably got their light spinnakers up. Um, they're probably a little worried about turning a little too hard this way right now and getting into this land, given the forecast that we've seen. Um, but they are going great, great, great right now. The, the issue for them becomes, wow, how do I get here, sort of up into this area? Do I do what Windquest and Manit and um, and Il Mastro are doing and go outside the Manitous? Do I go here, the traditional passage and shortest passage through the Manitous? When do I make that turn? How do I get across the lake? And it's going to be a uh, tricky, tricky thing for today. And the reason it's going to be a tricky thing, let me just show you. This is the uh, models we looked at yesterday and we're looking at again today from Stanley Weather Services. And um, this is valid right now at 8 a.m. You can see the winds out of the south. And they've had, let me get the scale on the page. Okay, winds, you know. This is suggesting 6 to 8. Clearly, the boat speeds we're, we're, we're showing say maybe it's just a touch more than that. Um, right now, wind speed over the open water of the lake. Let's fast, let's forward through this, though. So immediately, I want you to notice that the wind is lightening um, on the northern third of the lake and along the, the eastern edge of the lake and continues to do so. Now we're starting to have some substantial lightning up here even by 10 o'clock. That's my point with infinite diversion. Uh, as the winds lighten here in the straits, how are they going to be able to keep going, uh, assuming this forecast is correct? So wind lightning along the eastern shore of the lake, that's due to a lake breeze trying to set up and sort of conflicting with the gradient. Now up here where, where Il Mostro and Windquest are going to be, again assuming this verifies, getting really light, starting to get light where our racing fleet is right here. Um, lighter. This is noon central. Now we're at one central. Really light. Again, the pressure, just as we saw it yesterday, is actually along the uh, western shore of Lake Michigan, and no one stayed there. So let's see what happens. Um, two to four, four to six knots of wind. Uh, where everyone's going to be is the model forecast by two. I'll just fast forward three, four, five. Okay, now we have a little more pressure here. Not much, six knots maybe and softer pressure in the middle of the lake. Remember, I talked about everyone's decision about when to get over to this edge of the lake. It's going to be interesting. Now it gets really light at 6. At 7, there's no wind. At 8, there's even less wind. So quite a rough evening is if these forecast models hold. Um, and at 9, really, look all the way into the straits. There's a big high pressure, uh, thermal high pressure system, it looks like, sitting right over the top of Lake Michigan. So we'll watch the trends today to see whether that really happens. Um, that overnight, just fast forward to a quick peek at tomorrow. The winds start to fill back in little by little by little. By 6 o'clock tomorrow morning, we have light winds. And sort of by noon tomorrow morning, we're back into the no wind over the lake situation. So the, my point is there was a great night last night. There is a lot of racing left here. These forecasts hold. 
Um, these forecasts have been on the light side is the good news. Um, so maybe there's going to be more breeze than what we're seeing here. Um, you know, I certainly hope so because it's no fun uh, drifting for hours and hours and hours um, in the middle of Lake Michigan. I know I've done it. So uh, those are the thoughts for the morning and I uh, look forward to seeing everyone on Facebook. Thanks. Bye.